early. Sometimes it's good to be early. But our show starts at a specific time. You should remember that. Let's get started then, shall we? Dylan, I don't give a f what you think about a co host and freshen up my show. It might not be flashy, but sometimes you just gotta toss another person to make a statement. My show's about the people's podcast. Everyone has a voice. I don't need a co host. Go listen to one of the other 5,000 shows with a co host because they don't have a mouth like the big guy. Opie, are you a career killer with Tim Sabian? yourself and many others be myself never had real issues with the, those people they just understood that i was a different bird the rest of them though i'm like oh shut up i'm paying your salary because the ratings are so good so shut up hey. Hey. live from somewhere it's dylan <laughs> Good whatever to you whenever you are watching this episode of Co-Host Auditions. I am your co-host Dylan, and today our host is Tati Boya. I was looking to talk about Cartoon All-Stars to the Rescue, or as it was labeled on my VHS tape in the 90s, Cartoons Against Drugs. The animation event that aired on multiple networks at the same time to tell kids to just say no while sending us on an acid trip, a bad acid trip, by the way, which is a good strategy, actually, to show you the dangers of psychedelics, to send you on a bad psychedelic trip. I haven't had a bad trip myself, but I have been told those who had one never touch the stuff again. So that is a solid strategy. Oh, and Pee Wee, you have got, been knocked down. You don't look as uh, as good. as It look, looks like Pee Wee is a little bit knocked out from the vacation. I just got back from Tampa. The Who Are These Podcast Lives, Lives, Live Show, and that was a fun little experience. Got one night in Ebor. I would have liked a second night in Ebor City. Good people watching going on over there. Annie O'Ryan, my co-host from What Is This Game, came along with me, and uh, similar age. Uh, she said this was the first time she was really breaking out, doing something like that, and I was about 27 when I did that. There is the What Is This Game, and Andy Q. Public, the man who sent us down the Arkham Knight rabbit hole, he still actually hasn't finished the game. He's very close. He said he's at 98%, but if he's going by... If, I went by those percentages. It wasn't until I was like at 120% till I got to the final showdown. But I do believe there's extra content he's missing. He was like, Mr. Freeze? What, what Mr. Freeze content? So we will be getting to that soon. There is my Discord information. That does expire. I should make it permanent. And not, not as active as other dabbler discords, but I don't spend 18 hours a day in the voice chat. I do try to have a personal life outside this. That's why we're down to two days this week. Well, actually, we're down to two days because I needed an extra day to edit TikTok around the clock. And I do have a date tomorrow night. So personal life will get in the way of show life. I'm not going to sacrifice being a human in real life for this show every single time. Only some of the time. So before we get to our good buddy, Todd Boya, and uh, the talk about the PSA, the 30-minute PSA from all the cartoon characters that we loved in the early 90s, we are going to hit up some PSAs ourselves. And these were very prevalent in the 80s and 90s. So let's go to the one that is still parodied to this day, the G.I. Joe PSA. And you will notice these are all about 30 seconds. And that was to appeal to the government. There was a certain amount of educational material that had to be in kids' cart cartoons. So apparently 30 seconds met that minimum. And that's what they gave us. <laughs> this is going to be uh, the best looking bike in the block. <laughs> 
Ooh, I don't feel so good. Hey, Ezra, don't you know you're not supposed to use spray paints without lots of fresh air? All paints, and especially <laughs> they've got his eyes animated to be uh, getting all high from the fumes. Very nicely done, G.I. Joe animators, to have them accidentally getting high, like the first time that I robo tripped. Uh, the first time I tripped on Robotussin, absolute mistake. I didn't do it uh, on purpose the first time. The next dozen times were on purpose that I robo-tripped. And here is a little reminder, reminder, Electra, of a little thing, little things you should be careful about. As G.I. Joe told us in the final 30 seconds of their show. All paints, and especially spray paints, have poisonous gases in them. If you breathe too much, you can get... And the poison is what gets you high, folks. You need just the right amount of poison, and you will have a great time. Any more, and you will die. Even dolphins have figured that out, and they pass the puffer fish around like a joint. Very sick. We didn't know. Always read the label carefully and check for warnings before you start any job. Wouldn't hurt to wear these masks either. Now, now we know. know. And knowing is half the, the battle. battle. And one more before we get into the main segment. I decided to uh, sandwich some PSAs on this episode when I went to looking for them. And Sonic the Hedgehog kept this trend going into the early 90s of telling kids, I, I think before it was lifted. Uh, well, actually, it might be because it was on network television. You get on Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network, you don't have those uh, legal binds of having to be a certain amount of educational while selling toys. <laughs> Ding bot. I want to try this booze. <laughs> he really hit that booze. He, I forget these two robots' names, but the rooster really wants to try that booze. Oh, wait, let's go. Don't you bots know liquor is bad for you? Hey, try that, kid. Obviously, not dealing under the Futurama rules where liquor is very good and fuels their power cells. And uh, I'm, I'm more of a beer guy. So, yeah, be careful with liquor robots. You don't down it like that. You down beers like that. Well, not the beers I drink, but Coors Lights you can down like that. Hold it. Only dumb bots drink liquor. <laughs> Stay away from liquor, kids. Like all drugs, alcohol is dangerous. And you can get hooked. Just remember. Just remember, you can get hooked on those alcoholic beverages. So, after a little bit of a detour into some PSAs, let's get into a PSA. Toddy Boya, he is wearing him a knit cap looking very much like Meg Griffin with his black shirt, so he's kind of Bret Harding it up there. I am D-Generation Xing it up here with my green and black. So, will you be the one more going and, and agreeing while well, I am the degenerate in this worst cartoon event in history? What's something the Smurfs, Garfield, Kermit the Frog, and former President H.W. Bush all have in common? Well, they all conspired behind the scenes to kill a man? They all want you to stop taking- No, that's Clinton. Clinton is the one that killed the boys on the tracks. And if you listen to uh, Billy Jack Haynes, the wrestler, which you shouldn't, the order came directly from Hillary. I would really like to believe- that conspiracy theory, but uh, Billy Jack Haynes, not the most reliable of narrators. Taking drugs. Oh, and once again, nice job, where we were just paused on those uh, very intoxicated eyes. And they're all willing to traumatize you to do so because they all star in the hit 1990s television film Cartoon All-Stars to the Rescue. I think this is the single most ambitious crossover event there has ever been, or... I don't remember Cartoon Alf. Um... Maybe this Alf remembers him. We'll have to have a conversation off the air. Uh, I haven't figured out how to communicate with that Alf yet since his mouth doesn't really move. So uh, he does interpretive dance to let me know if he remembers cartoon self or not. Uh, the Muppet Babies, of course. DuckTales, Woohoo, uh, Tigger, Pooh. Just a singular Ninja Turtle. I do remember there was only a Ninja Turtle when... All they needed to do is just color swap the mask and the knee pads, and they would have had more Ninja Turtles. Oh, Alvin and the Chipmunks. And, oh, that, that's an original one. That's the that's the drugs talking to him. I was going to venture a guess that that was from the real Ghostbusters, 
but no, that is the drugs. Dancing Elf, I believe, will be making an appearance tomorrow. We do have a TikTok around the clock with a few musical guests. I'm still putting those or together. will ever be. I'm sure as kids, we all dreamed of our favorite cartoon characters banding together and taking on a larger-than-life threat. And what better villain for Winnie the Pooh, Baby Gonzo, and Slimer to take on than the concept of addiction? It was all hands- Look at a little Crypt Keeper-esque there, buddy. On deck for this production, it was credited to five different directors. Roy Disney himself came and executive produced this, and it even features a song from Academy Award winning composer Alan Menken. You would have definitely heard his work before he made. I don't know who that is. It songs for The Little Mermaid, Pocahontas, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin. I know those. And even Little Shop of Horrors. This was a huge crossover event of 10 different Ooh, animated Shop shows financed through McDonald's through the Ronald McDonald House charities, and it was simultaneously aired across all major US television stations completely ad free we're talking cbs abc as i mentioned this was uh taped on a little vhs tape i i don't know if i ever rewatched it i think i rewatched it once uh but the killer clowns from outer space that i taped off of hbo that's right my family was high class in small town maryland in the 90s we had hbo watch the shit out of that i don't think i rewatched i think i just fast forwarded it right, right through it Fox, NBC, Disney, Cartoon Network. So in that respect, uh, Cartoon All-Stars to the Rescue failed at their mission because you're supposed to be entertaining first and a message second, as G.I. Joe did of giving us 22 minutes of fun and then 30 seconds of message. Nickelodeon it, it, and more. It was the it was a whole shebang. In that moment of time, you had essentially no choice but to watch this. McDonald's even gave out a quarter of a million videotapes to video outlets, libraries, schools, all to rent out for free. This wasn't. I wonder if my family still owned the Family Fun video at that point. I'll have to ask them if they have any of the. I know they kept um, a lot of the Bond movies. I was disappointed they got rid of the Friday the 13th movies uh, because I was really big into those at the time. But uh, my uncle kept the Bond movies. They sold off a lot of their stock. And I think I was working up to a point. Uh, but uh, take it away since I lost what that was, Toddy. It wasn't just cartoon characters across several companies united. This was America united under one clear message. Drugs are bad. And let me tell you, this film... So just say no. What a great way to combat drugs. Not programs for people who have already gone down that path and are hopelessly addicted, but... Uh, just saying no, uh, once your body depends on it, we'll get the job done. Thank you, Mrs. Bush. And Electra, being a DJ and in the music world, uh, very familiar with Minkin and his work. Uh, yeah, yeah, his name, uh, absolutely did not know his name. But as, the, uh, as Toddy was telling us, a nice body of work. Um, and... Uh, Ooh, I'm starting to be Stutterfuck Dylan. I was off to a nice little start. It was almost 15 minutes till Stutterfucker got in here. What are you doing in here, Dylan the Stutterfuck? But uh, Danny Elfman, I was going to mention, starting out with a silly 80s band. And his name, we do know. Yeah, there are a lot of people, uh, composers that we don't know, like Minkin. And Toddy and uh, DJ Electrify would like to give him a little bit of credit. Um, not for this. Because uh, Minkin doing a lot of great stuff, uh, but it was his regular job. So there were some dud assignments that he was given and had to do his best with. And this was one of them. Certainly is a trip. Is there anything more American than forcing your entire populace to watch a War on Drugs propaganda video starring characters that existed to sell toys financed by McDonald's featuring the... I don't remember Bugs Bunny being in there. President. I think not. Not that we didn't get this in Australia, though. We absolutely did. It also simultaneously aired across all of our channels. However, our version, instead of featuring the US president, ours featured Mr. Prime Minister himself, Bob Hawke. Any of your favorite characters come together in this one cartoon to help you understand. You're missing the doggy. Mrs. Bush was holding a doggy. That helped appeal to the children. Oh, yes, Black and White. That's what I was working up to. Black and White by Michael Jackson, who is the other big TV simultaneous uh, event airing on so many channels that I recall from the time. This and Cartoons Against Drugs. I'm, not another one is coming to mind. I'm sure there were more. The drugs and alcohol 
can ruin your life. Now, if you're not from Australia, you might not know why this bit is funny. Bob Hawke was notorious for his ability to down a beer. He also allegedly beat the world record for downing a yard of beer in under 11 seconds. Even in his later life, you would see him sculling beers. That is awesome. That would help you win an election of being the guy that wins a chugging contest on your way through the election scene, campaigning, chugging a beer with the common man. That is actually a good strategy, Mr. Prime Minister. Happy Wednesday, BF Live. Uh, I don't know what happened to your comment you left last night. I was going to comment on it earlier today, but uh, yes, my Bob Levy uh, jacket photo from DabbleCon is my thumbnail. I will be updating that soon, but it's a fun little stand-in thumbnail, I do believe. Uh, and speaking of downing beers, oh boy, was Bob Levy a drunk fucker on stage. But that's, it worked for him. He had a hell of a stage presence, and he was a funny bastard that night, Mr. Drunken Bob Levy. Beers at the cricket. He was a true man of the people. That's my president right there. And he sounds really keen to be introducing this cartoon. These are funny characters, but they have a strong... You don't know a single one of these characters. We could hear that trepidation in your voice. Introducing this cartoon. These are funny characters, but they have a strong and a serious message. Now, jumping back to the original US airing, this featured George H.W. Bush, First Lady Barbara Bush, and of course, to make them just that touch more relatable, their dog Millie. Nothing relates to the kids like the president. So Bush was pretty huge on the war on drugs, although it really began with Reagan and Nixon. Bush more than... You create crack and then demonize those who do the crack. Good old Reagan doubled the federal drug control budget during his time in office. He even held up a bag of crack on live TV once, which was procured just across the street from the White House. How they got this is actually... Mm, I'm more conspiracy theory up. They had uh, the lab going there in CIA headquarters. An astounding story. They literally set up an undercover buy from an 18-year-old who was then sentenced to 10 years in prison. The whole point of this specific broadcast was to drum up fear that the drug trade could happen anywhere, even across the street from the White House. But they literally used government resources to... They say that that happened. Like, they... they, per they mm. CIA headquarters. I, I'm, they, they invented crack and foisted us upon us. I, I've got no point. I already made it. Uh, keep going as I get frustrated about the war on drugs that they created and then demonized uh, all the users for. To lure a teenager there to sell it. This wasn't by happen chance. They lured him there to give the president happen a proper speech to drum up fear. During this time in the 80s and early 90s, there was a huge fear regarding drugs. Specifically drug use in children. There was this big misconception that, you know, shadowy figures were going to come to the schools and offer your kids drugs. And they wouldn't be able to possibly say no. This fear was capitalized on and maybe even, dare I say, stoked by the governments at the time. They implement And the dirty fucking hippies did not help. Because of the dirty fucking hippies, all research into LSD was dropped. And I think it was just last night on uh, DJ Electrify's show where Hack Ride, actually Casey Day, uh, I get those two mixed up because they use the same body, uh, was talking about the uh, pain relief effects uh, in LSD and that they can extract it so you won't trip balls. Personally, I would want to trip balls. It definitely helps with depression, the psilocybin and such, and those damn fucking dirty hippies ruined it by, <clears throat> sure, it was fun, uh, but you hippies sucked. So anything you hippies were for, the eh, rest of the public was going to be again. Implemented programs like the D.A.R.E. program. This was designed to give kids... I say that as a dirty hippie myself. It's the tools to be able to resist people. I've got to hide my dirty hippiness under my hipsterness uh, because the, the, the dirty hipsters uh, have not been ran after with uh, p torches and pitchforks yet. They seem to be fading away more than being a public enemy, number one. But then again, I haven't been in Los Angeles in quite a while. I don't know uh, w what the... Um, shit, what, what was the main hipster location. I'll remember it in a few mi minutes. Uh, right next to Eagle Rock, uh, those hipsters were where they mutated and became new form of hipster.
peer pressure. But also later studies showed that maybe this had the opposite effect on people. At the time, there was also a huge push to make children's content educational. Bush was president when the Children's Television Act came into play in 1990. Having children's content be educational was huge for parents at the time. It made it a very popular political stance to take. There was a lot of controversy regarding that all these characters were essentially advertisements to sell toys. Some shows like He-Man were a little bit ahead of the curve on this. They would end the episode. And we do have a He-Man PSA at the end of that. They uh, also were like G.I. Joe and had their little 30 seconds of, hey, hey, folks, here's a little message so this can be educational. The Paps Blue Ribbon stock is down. The hipsters are invading Secret Snake's location. And over in Baltimore, it, sure, the Paps is fine for the hipsters, but it's the National Bohemian because that is the local shitty beer versus the uh, national old shitty beer of Paps Blue Ribbon. And I am the other breed of hipster who loves our craft IPAs. High ABV, uh, less pints poured. Episodes by having one of the characters explain what the moral of the episode was. Maybe like Adam's father, your parents find it a little difficult to say, I love you. A very long time ago, a wonderful document came into being. It was called the Magna Carta. Raymond things may look like fun, but it really isn't. Honestly, some of these are so iconic. You found a bunch more from He-Man than I did, Toddy. Nice job. I want to find that Magna Carta PSA. And hilarious. I think that we should still end television shows like this today. Now, as we all know, the war on drugs was a huge success. You can't find them anywhere anymore and nobody has them. And I think a big reason behind this is due to the television film Cartoon All-Stars to the Rescue. So come with me on this journey and let's have a look at- Boy, we're gonna go long today. I've had fun just rambling on for 20 minutes. Uh, we've still got most of this video to go, so I don't have to go to work today. We might be going long for a solo show how these crazy kooky cartoon characters saved America. Nay, saved the world. I love 80s and 90s animation, so as soon as I found out this existed, I was stoked, and I hope you were equally as stoked as you strap in for this journey, because it's gonna be a bumpy ride. Now, as we get into this, remember that the film is reportedly targeted towards the ages of 5 to 11, and the right- And our buddy, Toddy Boy, uh, is doing an intelligent thing here. He must have been studying the uh, YouTube strike laws, so he does have cartoon all-stars to the rescue playing in the background, but it is obscured so and zoomed in maybe even flipped i was trying a few strategies of that in the cable guy episode of successful failures a, a couple of things to be like oh this won't pass very few episodes uh clips of that passed i'm surprised any of them passed with so many getting flagged uh but yeah my little fiddle fucking around with that um did not uh open up did not release the DM writing and animating process strike. allegedly took between six and eight. I'm so used to saying DMCA, uh, just the copyright, the DMCA music only, not movies. Weeks, which is an alarmingly short amount of time for a project so ambitious. I think to really get you in the headspace for this. Mr. Blue Sky is ready to go long. I hope you're ready to go thick too. Film, maybe think of a couple of the characters as, you know, maybe Bluey or SpongeBob, other modern characters, so it can really hammer home how strange this piece of media is. Now take it away, Mr. President. Some of your favorite cartoon characters will help you understand how drugs and alcohol can ruin your life. As we leave the White House, we come to a quaint suburban neighborhood. A little girl named Corey sleeps in her bed as a good animation. Mysterious hand comes in and steals her piggy bank. Meanwhile, in a comic book, Papa Smurf wakes up, and he apparently has the ability to see through dimensions, and he notices that the piggy bank is missing. So he sounds... Now, this is just bullshit for any of us who know about Flatland. So, Papa Smurf, being from Flatland, and being able to see in the third dimension, Carl Sagan is really gonna want to talk to this Flatland being alarm and then all the smurfs head out of the comic book to go wake her up this is all noticed by alf for some reason alf lives in a picture frame which i guess is a perfectly normal thing for a girl of her age to have yeah it's not a poster it's a framed picture he d isn't sitting behind her with, uh, with with a bottle up his ass like this alf is uh but um I, I don't think there's anything to dance to today dancing alf even though it says cooking alf uh i use you for dancing purposes to have at the time. While Alf is probably more widely known for his puppet appearance, he did have an animated show as well at the time. He asks Garfield, who is a lamp, to come help him look for the thief. And Garfield refuses, so Alf 
And any type, uh, Garfield, as if he were any type of merch, would have worked. He was on fucking everything. I would have loved the suction cup uh, Garfield. That actually would have led to some clever gags as well for suction cup Garfield to uh, be able to do things, uh, like maybe grab his joint and stuff. But, man, we're going to have to rewrite. We're going to have to do a hindsight rewrite on this cartoon all-stars. I can make this entertaining first instead of educational first, because... Young me never rewatched this despite it being taped on a VHS. I knew to tape it on a VHS. This is important. It's on every single network, but never went back and watched it. Went back and watched the three ninjas taped off of TV a lot. Threatens to eat him. Canonically, that's something that Alf species likes to eat. They like to eat cats. I love the idea that Garfield has no interest in helping in this film whatsoever. He just doesn't want to die. So Alf and Garfield head off to... That is in character. Garfield is a lazy cat. He would have no interest in helping others, only having lasagna and getting the fuck away from Mondays. So uh, very well, very well done. Uh, first point that you get cartoon all-stars to the rescue is having Garfield stay in character of not giving a fuck. To find the thief and who catches him leaving will, of course, it's the chipmunks. Theodore and Simon would have helped, so they just Coming out it. of an album, very proper. Alvin with them. Meanwhile, the Smurfs stack up to go wake up the girl, which Winnie the Pooh, who's a stuffed toy, sees. And then Winnie the Pooh sets off Baby Kermit, who is an alarm clock. Baby Kermit is, of course, a baby Muppet from the show Muppet Babies, which is a show. They're, they're trying to find reasons, different products that these cartoons are in. So I do, I do appreciate that. Uh, n nice attention to detail here in this beginning. For me, Secret Snake, I only ever owned the first uh, three ninjas. Uh, uh, well, and I taped it, so I gave them no money. Uh, uh, kickback. Oh, and the third one had Hulk Hogan. I've actually never seen that one. Uh, the Three Ninjas with Hulk Hogan. I, I hear that's a piece of shit. I mean, Hulk Hogan's in it. It's got to be a piece of shit, right? The show where all the Muppets are babies. Now, important note, it seems there are Toy Story rules going on here. As the girl wakes up, the Smurfs all hide, and then the other two turn into their inanimate state. This is where Slimer from the animated Ghostbusters show just comes out of the wall. I guess he's just... All right, real Ghostbusters does have a presence, as I was pointing out earlier, of the drug ghost that is an original character. I figured that we would have the real Ghostbusters represented, and of course the kids want to see Slimer. Fuck the human characters. Just a regular ghost. He proceeds to eat a lamp, and then his mouth kind of acts as a spotlight to identify to the girl that her piggy bank is missing. Why doesn't she notice that two of her lamps are missing? That's got to be loaded. She's got two whole lamps. For some reason she's more surprised about her. I certainly would have noticed my Garfield mi missing before the piggy bank. Nice to know, Italian Stallion, that the third Three Ninjas might have been Jim Varney's last role. Uh, you know what I mean? I, I remember Roseanne being uh, one of Ernest P. World Jim Varney's last roles. It, he was really fun in the Beverly Hillbillies. That movie is better th than it should be, unlike Cartoon All-Stars to the Rescue, which is worse than it should be. Her missing piggy bank, then the literal ghost in her room. I get, I, I guess she didn't see it. Meanwhile, during their short walk down the hallway, our animated investigators have just grown to their regular sizes. They're no longer toy sized anymore. Yeah, apparently the chipmunks were actually this big in their animated show. I had only seen the film, so I assumed they were always meant to be chipmunk sized, but uh, apparently not. While investigating the brother Michael's room, they hear him coming back and they gotta hide. And it turns out that he was the culprit. Or he comes in and catches him red handed but Michael assures her that he was just trying to fix it. Sounds like a lie to me. There's also a suspicious box which he hides under his bed. This box is full of evil paraphernalia, like matches and a ocarina, and the tunes are just astonished. Simon, who is a nerd and a narc, explains, Unfortunately, the three ninjas have something against Mr. Blue Sky, and they stole his cable. The three ninjas helped me steal my cable and got me those free pay-per-view channels for free. Free pay-per-view channels for free. Those pay pay-per-view channels. Pay pay-per-view? Two strikes on what I was trying to say there. So uh, channel number 26, I didn't have to watch it. And once I did get channel number 26, well, it didn't matter to me. I, I was just all about boobies, uh, but but that was the Spice Network. So didn't have that penetration, which teenage me would have enjoyed. But uh, pre-pubescent me, always a bit fan of titties. That's why uh, you can uh, check out Miss Electric uh, Fry's show and be... Actually, no, you don't show those uh, luscious knocker knockers on that show. Um, fuck. 
I was starting to go down a joke, and then I failed. I do believe we need our buddy Duke Phillips to step in to admonish me. Duke, are you there? <laughs> where's the joke? Sir, so I'm here. I know we're on the air, but where's the joke? The joke was happening, and then I just Dave Meltzered myself up by talking about topic, adding on another topic, and I fucked it all up, Duke Phillips. Oh, speaking of which, next week, successful failures covering the ABC season of The Critic, along with Secret Snake. Big fan of that. I don't think he's seen all the episodes. There's only 23, so looking forward to talking about The Critic with you on successful failures explains what he thinks it might be my guess would be marijuana an unlawful substance used to experience artificial highs yeah those are words i never thought i would hear a chipmunk say michael's also acting super weird and he's also using those fancy two dollar words instead of putting it in a kid's language and actually, that whole kickoff uh, of the uh, nostalgia TV shows becoming movies, I think the Adams Family might have been the first and was very well done. The Beverly Hillbillies was well done. And it wasn't for a little while till they started dropping in quality. And something's wrong. And by a while, I mean a couple of years. Wrong with his eyes. Maybe Simon's onto something here. All the tunes convene and they decide that they all want to help Michael. Simon suspects drugs. Oh my. Oh, that's bad. Let's help him. I have no idea why Slimer of all characters cares. I feel like maybe I missed that character arc for him. Also, God and Winnie the Pooh is just bidding everyone goodbye. Have fun saving the day. I'm going to be here. Maybe his presence, since he was a teddy bear, would have been missed the most. So they are trying to comfort uh, this little girl by all the random characters from her comic book and her Chipmunks album uh, just being an instrumental now. Uh, maybe the teddy bear will help distract her from those. Garfield is a literal lasagna addict, okay? I think they need to help him first. So they all go off and help him, except for Winnie the Pooh, who just stays at home because he's lazy. Now we're introduced to Smoke, who is the villain of the piece, as Michael blazes up in the arcade. Throughout the whole film, he's just trying to convince Michael to get high and ignore his family and stuff like that. But do you know what's cooler than Chronic? Crack. All the kids are totally down to do it, but they hear the fuzz and they gotta book it. Michael is cornered. He's even abandoned by smoke. He's about to become a victim of the war on drugs. And according to the Anti-Drug Abuse Act of 1986, the minimum sentence... And that is proper for anyone else that you're getting high with. I'm, I'm out for myself. Uh, the slowest one is going to jail. Bye! For a first offender of marijuana possession... Oh, wow, now he's really looking like Meg Griffin putting those uh, glasses on. Did you mean to do this, Toddy? Very, very Meg Griffin-y. Five years. But thankfully, it's just Bugs Bunny. Wait, hang on. What? Yeah, so Bugs Bunny wasn't with the earlier Toon characters, and he didn't even know. I can't quite make out that voice if this was one of Mel Blanc's final... I think it would be after. Uh, Mel, ba Mel Blanc passed in 1989, right? And this was like 91, 92, I believe. So this may have been one of the first post Mel Blanc Bugs Bunnies. Oh, that Michael was partaking in the devil's lettuce. Watch this. A joint? And he's not trying to hide his existence or anything. He's not a toy. <laughs> that That's a fun drop. A joint? And he's not trying to hide his existence or anything. He's not a toy come to life or something. Literally just wandering around impersonating a cop. Is he meant to be like a hallucination? If I do drugs, can I hang out with Bugs Bunny? Or is he just like a real dude wandering around? I don't know. Anyway, no. That, that's a nice ISO. Uh, Bugs Bunny, what's this a joint? Uh, that might be a, an isolated clip to throw on the board. Time to explain. Get in this time machine. Meanwhile, the father notices that some of his beers are missing, but he doesn't really think. Magnum P.I., look at 1980s dad with that powerful mustache and the receding hairline that hopefully stops where it's at to be nice and sexy still, but not bald before the late 90s made uh, shaved heads on white guys to be acceptable. Uh, other races, uh, what shaved heads have been uh, actually that's that that sounds like a fun topic to get into of how like, yeah, back in the 30s, it was just a high embarrassment to be to have a shaved head. Why would you have that? That's why the comb over uh, was such a thing for a long time, because bald, bald. 
exactly think anything of it. And the mother talks to Corey, asking if anything's wrong. And Corey says that nothing's wrong. Because she ain't no snitch. This is where Winnie the Pooh reveals... That is exactly right in this one. A few of my beers is mi are missing. I learned it by watching you, Dad. Feels his existence to her. He's just revealing that he's a sentient being now. And he does this solely just to question her life choices. If I tell and he gets in trouble, he'll blame me. What will happen to him if you don't tell? Meanwhile, Bug Smoke and Michael travel back. Yeah, what happened to those Toy Story rules, Pooh? two years into the past. Interesting fact, this is the first time that Bugs Bunny was voiced by someone other than the original voice actor Mel Blanc. He had recently passed away. Due okay, thank you for doing that research for me, Toddy. To numerous health issues relating to uh, smoking. Oh, uh, there's that. Past version of Michael sees kids blazing up at school and they end up here pressuring him into trying it. Glad you whipped out the time machine for this astounding revelation, Bugs. But as I said earlier, this was uh, one of the big talking Are you going to get back to those uh, cool kids? Because they did, did look pretty cool. Uh, I, I don't know if I want to go back and seek that out, but uh, that was a pretty hot chick. And uh, chicks who smoke like to do it. At the time, it's all about- So I totally understand why they want him over educating kids to resist peer pressure. Bugs just fully lays into him here, like it's a full-on roast fest. Better a wimp than an all-day sucker. Not very bright, definitely not one of the world's foremost thinkers. Honestly, I'm about to side with that evil smoke dude because this is feeling a little mean-spirited at this point. Anyway, Bugs explodes smoke in some kind of metaphor and it cuts to the little girl having a conversation with her father. She starts- I vaguely remember that guy's voice uh, being kind of like, it, it, it might have been, no, it couldn't have been Morton Downey Jr. I, I, I recall his voice being very Morton Downey Jr.-esque, and that would be very hilarious if uh, M Mr. Uh, Smokey TV fight, it, the, it, doing it before Jerry Springer made it blow up, if Morton Downey Jr. was the smoke character. That's what my memory is remembering Smoke's voice being like. Starts trying to explain what's going on and then just kind of gives up halfway through. And then it cuts back to Michael, who is now smoking a pipe in a park. How do we go from Michael being two years in the past with Bugs Bunny to him just chilling in a park? It's like they couldn't think of a- So the first thing that he wanted to do when he get, got back to the uh, regular timeline. 420 Kids does sound like something that would be on uh, TV Funhouse. If there was a season two of TV Funhouse, uh, B uh, Bobby Fran, we might have gotten the 420 Kids. I wish we got more of the safety gang as seen on part two of where me and secret snake bro broke that down on successful failures. The safety gang run, 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 run. That, that would have been right in place with the 420 kids on TV fun house. Think of a way to transition this. So they just shoved in a little tiny scene of, of the girl. I don't know. Anyway, his friend knows where to score crack for only. Oh yeah. Now we're seeing in color, the uh, good looking older girl who got him into it. And, uh, oh, oh yeah. I bet, I bet that uh, they all get high and they don't even mind that she gets passed around. So they're having just a good old time. She's having a good old time. And, are the animators implying a little bit of brazzers -y thing going on here with these two? Nicely done nod there, animators. Only $10. Michael starts walking away, and then they steal his wallet. As Michael gives chase, he is kidnapped by none other than Michelangelo the Ninja Turtle himself. Real heroic move, man. A guy just- That's more of a Raphael move. If you were gonna have one Ninja Turtle and he's kidnapping the character, that's more of a Raphael thing than a Michelangelo thing got his wallet stolen and then you kidnap the victim love the implication of this that the cartoon characters just do not care about anyone else they only care about michael this girl just robbed someone to buy crack do something about her first man you got your prior but she's hot uh, we we've got uh piper perry uh, uh, Piper Perry Sr. there uh, going out and uh, the cartoons are apparently a fan of Piper Perry's work because uh, she is absolutely free to go out and do what she wants. The, Bobby Fran, uh, this, yeah, th the problem about telling kids n to be, uh, to watch out for drugs is you're exposing them to drugs. It, it, it absolutely exposed innocent kids to what drugs w were for the first time for uh <laughs> yeah the uh the dare program uh, C secret snake the uh they show you pictures here, here is what marijuana is here is what coke is so a little bit 
of a backfire by just broadcasting that big net onto everyone to uh, take their innocence away with these uh, Drugos. Priorities twisted here, Michelangelo. Are you meant to be some kind of superhero? What the, What are you doing? Also, for some reason, none of the other Ninja Turtles are in this. It's just Michelangelo. For some reason, they picked the one who has the same name as the main <laughs> character. Also, out of... Uh, it looks like the vast majority of me and the chat, uh, 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 DJ Electrify, was then introduced to them, was then interested in them after getting introduced to them by the Don't Do Them programs, as was Secret Snake, as was I. Actually, uh, my brother uh introduced me to the marijuana uh long before this uh, actually right, probably right around the time uh they were like hey, hey if if you want if you want us to do that oh wow they were that's quite abusive that they made four or five year old me take a bong hit in or in order to i forget what the fuck i wanted but they were watching me hey can i watch it da, da, da. sure if you take this bong hit or chug this beer you, you you guys were kind of really bad. <laughs> that, that is borderline abusive. Out of all the ninja, tell a four or five year old, hey, if you want your babysitters to follow through with what you want to do, chug this beer or take this bong hit. And four or five year old me was like, well, I can't chug that beer. Just physically, it's not going to happen. And beer is disgusting at that point. It would just be. So uh, let's burn our lungs because we don't know how to take this in. Uh, more, more trauma talk with Dylan coming later. Ninja Turtles, probably the most likely to be a stoner. And also they didn't put him in any of the promotional materials for this. Smurfette made the poster and she's not even in the bloody thing. The hell are they doing here? This is easily one of the most popular characters in this thing. And he's a cool guy. More people are going to listen to him than they are uh, uh, Simon. Michelangelo has some... Let's take Michelangelo's belt, turn it upside down, and turn everyone into wumbo size. Stern words for him and then flushes him down a sewer. It's honestly so abrasive seeing so many of these iconic characters just be really, really rude. Just be so mean to someone who is clearly struggling with addiction. Now this is where the film starts going really off the rails, if you can believe it. We were on the rails before this. You're about to take a trip to the human brain. Yep. Yeah, here we go. Yes, yeah, so baby. Wumbo Angelo has just started the drug trip. Uh, pulling the drain out and having get him get flushed down. The trip has begun. Are you folks ready? Baby Kermit and baby Miss Piggy are taking Michael on a tour of the brain. <laughs> Not really a tour though it's more of just a roller coaster because for every up there's an even bigger down yeah, see. oh this could actually be like a going back in memory thing uh, of, of your of your uh tra the problem with uh with, with, with me doing a uh, trauma talk re uh, as a regular segment electra it just kind of comes out I, I don't plan on it i just stumble upon it in my brain as maybe our main character will stumble upon why he is so compelled to do these drugs I see. At this point, it seems they've just completely thrown away the concept that all these characters were toys. They're all now just whatever the plot needs or they're like hallucinations or something. I, I don't bloody know. I don't know. Michelangelo uh, got him all high. He he licked the turtle. And uh, Michelangelo, apparently, like the Australian frogs, our main character licked him. And he is on a trip now. What's happening? Baby Gonzo just shows up out of nowhere as all these hellish, nightmarish visuals are being thrown at the screen. And three literal babies explain the chemical nature of addiction. And then we get our big reveal. It wasn't just any old brain. It was Michael's brain. And he's... It was my brain the entire time. And you must be dealing by some of those uh, Futurama miniature rules by actually... Uh, being a uh, robot version of yourself to be able to go into your brain uh, because otherwise that is physically impossible. He's having some kind of crazy sunken place experience. You can't tell what's happening at this point. They're essentially doing a very loose adaptation of A Christmas Carol. In the original story, Scrooge, who is a notorious Christmas hater, is visited by three ghosts. Past oh, thank you for uh, telling me about this story, A Christmas Carol, Toddy. I am unfamiliar with it, have never heard it before, and do not know it chapter and verse like the vast majority of the population. So thank you for going over this present and future and ultimately by the end they cause him to change his way but in this instead of an old man it's a young man and instead of christmas it's sobriety and instead of the ghost of christmas past it was bugs bunny 
and for present, it was the Muppet Babies. At this point, the Muppet Babies are literally choking on secondhand smoke. And at okay, you, you, had, you had something there. Uh, the way you presented it, uh, C, uh, but uh, the concept what was an A. As the brain begins to crumble, the babies flee and literally lock Michael inside his own head. He's out of control and he collapses, but he comes to his- Wouldn't that- it, look, doesn't that imply that you've locked him in his acid trip for life? Certainly other people have met those folks who did too many psychedelics and fried their brain. I feel like the Muppet Babies uh, just forcefully fried Michael's brain. Uh, he was ready to come out of the trip and they locked him in his head. So you're just tripping forever. You're fried forever, sir. There was a guy at work uh, w one time uh, who uh, a waitress asked him, could you help me get that off of the top shelf? Reach reach i'm sorry we're just gonna have to wait until someone taller gets to work absolutely could not problem solve to we've got a stepladder over there let's get that uh just nope that up there not happening with us at work someone taller will be in eventually then we can get that task done to his senses when he is greeted by Huey, Dewey, and Louie from the DuckTales. So maybe Woo. he hasn't come to his senses. Maybe he's still high and he's surrounded by three literal ducks. I gotta get off of these drugs. <laughs> Actually, that would be fun if the camera were to pan out to someone's point of view where he is just talking to ducks who want his bread. Maybe that was uh, your sister's ex uh, who, who was waiting for a taller person to come to come to work. Annie, uh, yeah, those uh, those fried people, you do uh, you do psychedelics for me once a season would would be perfect, like four times a year. Once a month isn't bad. Um, oh, boy, uh, my brother was, was an every other kind of day guy for a little while, which uh, kind of does explain his current state of mind. So he's just telling everyone that he's on drugs at this point. But the docs tell him that he's just got to say no to substances. And it turns tattletale. out there's at least a million zillion ways to say... Ducktales or tattletales. It was right in the name the whole time. Say no. This is where the song comes in, Wonderful Ways to Say No. It features the Ducktales, Ducks, the Muppet Babies, Garth... All right. I do kind of vaguely remember this now that you pointed out. Uh, so it was a little bit catchy. And our buddy, or uh, whoever his name was, DJ Electra Minkin. Uh, Minkin did make a memorable tune here because, yeah, now that I'm reminded of it, I, I do remember there are wonderful ways to say no a little bit. Our field, Winnie the Pooh, Alvin and the Chipmunks, Alf, Michelangelo, a Smurf, Bugs Bunny, and for some reason, Tigger's here now. Unfortunately, on the way over to the park, Papa Smurf died. He didn't make it. Sorry, folks. Now, because I don't know how much of the song I can actually play, I'm just going to give you some of the examples of different ways to say no from the song. You could say you're late for baseball. You could say your hamster died. You're training for football, that you're allergic. You could say, no, thanks. You could say that those drugs are boring. If you're in Berlin, those drugs are boring. What you want is some Fent. You can say... Actually, a, a buddy down in Tampa uh, was saying how he was really into Fent. I thought he was doing a bit. No, he really likes the Fent. Uh, had a nice time talking to you, but uh, oh boy, uh, be careful. Uh, W-A-T-P buddy, who I talked to for a bit. They really likes nine. Fent. Uh, Tigger suggests that you could spit in their eye and ultimately Miss Piggy employ Spit in their eye. Now Tigger is trying to get you stabbed or punched at the very least. Don't listen to Tigger. Lies that you should kick the shit out of them. Michael wakes up from this like it was the worst night. Okay, so uh, both Tigger and Miss Piggy are trying to get you knocked the fuck out by just saying no thank you. Man that he's ever experienced, and I think that's fair enough. Oh, wow, thank goodness. This whole thing was a dream. I'm so glad this it is over. It was all a dream. The old drug box, and oh my god, it's still going. Corey comes in to talk to Michael, and he proceeds to aggressively throw her. As he looks at himself and begins to reflect on his decisions, he's greeted by every child's favorite cat eater, Alf, who proceeds to pull him into the mirror dimension. It's here that Alf decides to gaslight Michael in a very confusing scene. He implies that Michael can't see things the way they really are in quite a... So you would have thought that the uh, main uh, uh, thrust, the song, would have gotten him again uh, out of the drugs. But no, he still likes the drugs. It's up to you, Alf. 
you've got to dance a good little jig in order to get him. Hey, Cause the song didn't do it. So you're going to have to dance. And I do not remember the Alf cartoon, but here he is as a cartoon all-star. A literal sense to the point where Michael can't even tell what he looks like in the mirror. Alf shows him that he really looks like a zombie. I'm watching the film and I can clearly see that Michael doesn't look like that. What are they trying to say here? And to clarify, this is not Alf saying that Michael will look like this. He is saying that Michael currently looks like this. We're not off to the future bit yet. You got to hold your horses for that. Before he comes back into Michael's room, but he's not there anywhere because he's in the mirror dimension. She sees the box on the ground and the evil smoke tries to convince if he is in the mirror dimension, uh, shouldn't he have a goatee to differentiate the real him and the mirror him? Did I open it? Don't do it, Corey. It's not worth it. Winnie the Pooh doesn't think it's a good idea, so Smoke proceeds to just yeet him across the room. Corey doesn't really give a shit about this because she is too enamored by the drugs. At this point, Michael is just running around some kind of freakish carnival hellscape. There's all these buzz saws. At, at one point, he falls into the mouth of a demon. I'm not sure this is meant to represent anything in particular. I think oh, just in time, Hack Ride. He's falling into the mouth of a demon. Maybe you can get a third person in that body. It's just trippy visuals for a scare tactic. The idea behind scare tactics. You know, other than the sex way. Scare tactics like this is that it's meant to create an association in a child's brain. This was scary and this was about drugs and therefore drugs are scary. But in reality, it's more likely to have an opposite effect. Let's say years after watching this, a young person is at a friend's house and they decide to smoke weed for the first time. They're nervous because drugs are scary. That association is still there. But and then they try it and realize this cartoon was full of shit, so we might as well mainline. Since it was full of shit, must must have been completely full of shit. Horror movies are scary, and roller coasters are scary, and those are fun. And they're in a safe environment, and they're not going to let Simon control what they do with their life. Uh, speaking of safe environment, that is uh, also how I would often trip of having uh, uh, someone not tripping. Uh, me and my other buddy had our person to watch over us. To make sure we didn't get in too much trouble. The, uh, he was drinking. He was having a fun time drinking. Uh, but he definitely uh, kept us two um, guy, guys on mushrooms from wandering into traffic or onto a plane. Uh, luckily, we didn't have a baby and an immigrant with us. Otherwise, all chaos would have broken loose, as seen on TV Funhouse life but they try it and then hypothetically everything is really fine and chill and they had a good time it was not remotely comparable to the hellscape that they depicted in the cartoon so therefore harder drugs can't be as bad as they say either or if this was so dramatically overhyped then harder drugs aren't going to be that much worse this is why education is always these flaccid drugs are all right now let's get into the hard drugs so much more important than scare tactics. You see what I'm saying? Did, did this make sense? Does this make sense? Anyway, you're back, back to the costume. Yes, it does he's make a Griffin. carnival tent that's advertising fortune telling, and he's curious, so he goes in, and who's in there? Well, it's none other than notorious con artist Daffy Duck. Daffy Also a Mel Blanc. So uh, two big Mel Blanc cartoon characters for the first time being bastardized to tell us uh, drugs as no bueno. Duck is our ghost of Christmas future. Anyway, Michael sees his future, which is him strung out, looking like a zombie, needle in his arm. It's honestly a pretty traumatizing image for a kid. I don't know why they didn't just stick with the classic, you know, kind of like headstone, just saying that he died from it or something. This feels like maybe too much for a show that also includes Winnie the Pooh. As he has his- Well, they made that character design, so they gotta fucking use it. We've barely gotten- gotten- that. We've barely been able to use that druggy design of our lead character. And fuck, we spent a lot of time and effort on it. Drugs are bad epiphany. A bunch of the cartoon characters come in and say their piece. It reminds me a lot of that scene in Neon Genesis Evangelion when all the characters come in and congratulate Shinji. He comes out of the closet. He smacks the box. And <laughs> he comes out of the closet. Hello, sister. Galleon, when all the characters come in and congratulate Shinji. He comes out of the closet, he smacks the box out of his sister's hands, and after a talk, he vows to quit drugs forever, and he throws smoke in the trash. I learned it from you, brother, and you learned it from dad. Alf, why did you drag him into the closet? Uh, are you one of those old school type of homosexuals who much prefer it the way it was in the 70s? He, he remembers the good old days where uh, they, they were shunned. Uh, he, uh, Alf, enjoys that secrecy, but uh, that's not where we live in 2023, Alf. They are out and about. They are loud and proud.
Nimrob, a nice catch. He smacks the box of his sister. So that does lead us into the second special of the cartoon all star or st- all stars of a brother smacking a sister's box. But he knows he'll be back one day. But he also knows that he's got his friends and his family to back him up. Winnie the Pooh then joins all of his friends in a poster. I guess they forgot that he was a stuffed toy. Michael and his sister leave to go tell his parents all about what happened today. This film left me with one main question, and that was, what the hell happened to Slimer? Did the dude finally go to heaven after his one good deed? What happened here? Did they, did they forget about him? Where's my guy? I get that he doesn't have a voice for singing, but I feel like they could have put him in the song. He can lip sync or something. At least one of the Smurfs got to be in it. They were literally doing a Christmas carol. You know, ghost. Ghost of Christmas future. Slimer is a ghost. Make the connection. While this film had zero lasting culture. Yeah, there wasn't that much attention to detail. Cultural impact. I can safely say that it greatly impacted me. I honestly really love Oh, this. yeah. And the little sister lost her cuddly little teddy bear because he decided to be a figure in a poster instead of a teddy bear anymore. It sounds like that Winnie the Pooh is afraid of affection because he doesn't want to be hugged by the ones that love him. He just wants to be seen, not touched. The visual of baby Kermit abandoning a child in his own overdosing brain is a visual that I will never forget and I will always hold dear. I do absolutely love the implications of that, of the the man stuck in his brain overdosing and the cartoons abandon him. That That's, to me, uh, that implied that his brain will be fried. But yeah, the way that Meg Griffin put it here is that uh, they left him to overdose and die and uh, Jimi Hendrix himself uh, drowning on uh, liquid even worse than water. Honestly, gonna rewatch this for every year for the rest of my life. All right, catch you next time. And remember, the moral of this video was to not do drugs. Drugs don't make your problems go away. They just create more. Thank you, Toddy Boya. And there you are with a different knit hat. Um, I'd stay away from that pink knit hat, especially uh, with those glasses, if I were you, Toddy Boya. Thank you for that presentation. And um, yeah, that was that was an all right video. Uh, your... Uh, co- comparisons uh, to the, a Christmas Carol, um, I, I, f- I found to be a good idea, but a C in execution, as I said. Could have used a little more rewrites, but that's why I'm here. That's actually one of my dates coming up, is that uh, we are going to be critiquing each other's writings. Well, I have something to critique. She just has loose ideas that are going to uh, be developed into something m- more. The pink hat has all kinds of implications. And um, the, the mustache wasn't very good. Uh, it, see, we were building you up, Toddy. Now we're tearing you down, and we're going to help build you up again. See, uh, I was saying nice things about you to get on your side, and now me and my chat are going to tear you down and uh, build you back up, uh, b- uh, with convincing you that you need me, despite the fact that you probably have a lot more, let's see, 17.3 thousand subscribers. That v- video is a month old and has 86,000 views. So, yeah, doing a little bit better than me. So, uh, thank you, uh, chat, for helping me break him down to make uh, him think that he needs me. <laughs> Absolutely, Hack Ride, a writing date. This is actually not the first time that i have done this it's i am uh, quite the fucking nerd so I, I will let you know how that goes there's actually three dates planned for this weekend so uh, one is a second date so woo that, that, that will be fun isaac walmart does not trust australians always up to no good as the simpsons taught us they were a culture built an original prison colony that just became a, a, a regular asshole colony. So we've got a few more PSAs, two more PSAs, uh, knowing is half the battle. So it sounds like we're kicking it off with another G.I. Joe PSA. They just had 22 minutes of action. Now, 30 seconds of learning. The safety gang says you can make it too. Stop! It's too late to cross! Hold up! Bikes faster than trains. Duh! That's a dangerous game you two were playing. Listen to your friend Chris. Those. Ga- 
That's why it's so goddamn thrilling. We don't play chicken because it's safe. We play chicken because it's thrilling. Gates, I provided as a warning to let you know that it's not safe to cross. We could have been hurt. Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. You kids didn't know you were playing chicken. You're kind of dumb. You actually would have done the world a favor by going over those tracks and uh, getting run over by the train, unlike those teenagers that the Clintons killed by that train. <laughs> actually, yeah, let's go back. Uh, Secret Snake noticing that he is still strapped in order to talk to the kids. Yes, he is carrying. It, it is. He is ready for anything. He's going to shoot that train. If the kids don't stop in time, thank God they sent one star general for this. <laughs> this was something that we could not have uh, just a new recruit do. We, we need uh, the one star general to come in and tell these kids uh, trains make ouchies that can't be cured. So uh, we've got one more PSA before we get to the uh, clown ladies. And this is from He-Man. Tell us, He-Man, what lesson do we need to learn? Shira and I want to talk to you about something that's very personal, your body. Remember, it's your body and no one should touch you in a way that you feel is wrong. I'll get anybody who tries. It's not that easy, Orko. It's hard for a young person to admit that he or she has been touched in a bad way. If you've been touched that way, don't be ashamed. Tell someone you trust, like your parents, your doctor, your teacher, or counselor. Or the person that, tr uh, that touched you, because you probably trusted them. Tell them all about how they touched you. I'm sure it'll make a difference. Or your minister or rabbi. Right, Orko? Right on! Getting into a little Uncle Paul territory. You never know where the G.I. Joes will pop up from. They are an elite squadron, and they may or may not have a Stargate to jump into the territory of danger, Isaac Walmart. They didn't talk about the Stargate that the G.I. Joe had, uh, but um, it, it was one of those things that was just kind of implied in order for the kind of like Jack Bauer getting around Los Angeles like that. He, he just had a stargate because traffic uh, either that or traffic just doesn't exist in that version of Los Angeles that 24 presented to us. But on to our lady clowns of the day, we just had some PSAs and now uh, nurse kaboom from ghost light odyssey. Those going to Hackamania, look out for the fun police. They are doing some shenanigans in the Las, Las Vegas area. So, uh, Tell us, uh, Nurse Kaboom, what is on your mind? Josh Bynes has been coming all night long, but then he pulls out, and, and it's just hard. It's been a while since he's seen a hole that big. <laughs> Nurse Kaboom has a dirty mind. We would get along very well, Nurse Kaboom. I go to the sexual references quite all the time. And, um, yeah, a lot, a lot of holes that need to be filled from the NFL and in Clown Ladies. If I call the police, they're going to be here in 10 minutes. Okay. Then that leave me nine to beat the hell out of you. You think? I know Taekwondo. And I know whoop your ass. Not as big a fan of, um, what's the other clown's name? Uh, Miss Flimsy Mimsy. Uh, I am quite the big fan me? of Nurse Kaboom, but uh, Flimsy Mimsy, uh, not, not a huge fan of... Nine uh, to beat the hell out of you. Uh, but I do bet that Nurse Kaboom would be in to that beating that she's getting. She seems like the type that would enjoy a proper beating when it is called for. Uh, the type of submissive that is a brat. I, I personally am a switch and not a brat. I, what my dom asks of me, I do. And that is D-O-M-M-E -M -M -E, because that is a female uh, dom. I can go ahead and say the full word, a dominatrix. So that was uh, today's episode and uh, Jason Bardo X getting in a little plug of his own. Yo, check freak pod. Oh, speaking of a little plug, I did not get in a shill segment uh, where I thank you for watching and ask you to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also find me at Dylan from somewhere at gmail.com. Find me. Communicate with me over there if you would like to be on chatting with beloved chatters. I've got a Twitter, but I am bad at checking that. So uh, the email is, is uh, better. 
of that. And I will be back with What Is This Game soon with Andy. Andy? Andy and Annie. And Trucker Andy, the one who suggested it, still finishing up the game. Annie and I finally did beat that big old monster. I got a Discord over there. Not as active as other d- Discords, uh, but uh, I am chasing tail rather than being in the voice chat 18 hours a day. So um, got, got to balance out uh, the online and the personal life. And uh, as Casey Day pointed out to me, there is a little more balancing I do need to do on the front of the uh, social media and just playing the YouTube game. And, oh, wow, this episode actually didn't run long. We are right around the regular time where we would get on out of here. You're like, whatever you wish, my dom. Ooh, is my dom a site? Uh, because D-O-M, that, that does imply a man. D-O-M-M-E implies a lady. And I am looking for uh, the lady in charge there so tomorrow we will be back with more tiktok around the clock i'm still editing that and probably three episodes next week as i mentioned my goal is three 11 30 a.m eastern tuesday through thursday uh but personal life it's got it's got to come in there i don't want to get bogged down that's actually one of the reasons that i'm not too good at twitter of seeing some los angeles comedians uh really go down that Twitter hole and become obsessed with their online personality versus their uh, the actual self. Okay, I won't mention that that uh, Casey Day guy uh, anymore. Hack ride. I, I will make sure to cite the other person living in that body, you, rather than uh, that fucking guy. Thank you for the nod to the nerd beanie. Thanks to my roommate for the Christmas present here. And this works well for work. I work in a refrigerator, basically, and it hides my ear pods. So I can listen to music and the bosses will be none the wiser. Uh, That was all for today. Thank you all for joining me on this uh, drug trip of a drug PSA. And join me again tomorrow for TikToking around the clock. I'm not sure what's making the final cut, actually. I've still got to get those down to time. So uh, thank you all for joining. Now feel free to go away. Well, it looks like that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for going on this adventure with me. It's fun being with friends and friends. I'll see you next time. Bye now. Bye for now. Toodaloo. Au revoir. Auf Wiedersehen. Ciao. Ding dong day. Places all. All join hands, circle left. Now circle right and listen to me. LS, LS, MFT. Elementary corners like swinging on a gate. To right, dear honey, with a right to left eight. Grand right and left around you go. Lucky strike means find a back goal. Meet your honey and give her a whirl. All swing around with the little girls. Smoke them, smoke them, then you'll see. LS, LS, MFT. Promenade and don't you fall. Promenade around the hall. Lucky strike is first again. First again with tobacco men. Promenade straight down the pike. It's time right now for a lucky strike. Yes, for smoking that you're bound to like, you just can't beat a lucky strike.